these guys. Right. Yeah, my both my mom and my dad come from this area. Um, <laughs> you want to go back there? Yes, I do go there. Yes, um, my dad is always going there from like almost every week. He's always there. Yeah. Oh, back up the name of the area. So the name of the area is called Peru. Peru. Peru is two words. It's actually go and die. Yes. Yes. Quo, go and die. You know why it's called Quo? So this is it. Before you you get up there, Quo on the mountains, there is there is a town called Nkoko. Nkoko means Nko which means don't go and die. They give you a warning before you climb there. Nko don't go and die. That's really a fact. Yes, it is. Why? Because, you know, back then, there was a lot of ethnic groups and tribes that were fighting amongst themselves. So, if you, people would run away from others, and then also, because during that time, slavery was high, and slavery was all up, so there were those who would actually go and hide. So, they hid in so many places. They hid on mountains, the people who actually built a whole town on a river. So, if you want to go and capture them, or fight with them, they are going to meet, meet your death. Because they are up the hill, and so when you are coming, they see you. So you can always roll stones and then kill you. So if you want to go and die, then you go there. Uh, so <laughs> like capturing them for the Europeans? For money or for food or whatever? So, yes. Okay. Capturing them for slavery. Right, to give to the Yes, but then for guns, gunpowders and all that. We'll talk about that. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yes. So, yes, so based on that, there were a lot of ethnic groups. You know, the Akans are a group of people, okay, and at one particular stage in time, one Akan state was um, supreme over the other. So, the whole history of the Asante actually starts around um, the 1500 and 1600. Basically, the 17th century. There was this state that was actually called the Daintra State. Daintra. They can be found now on the present day where the Kakum National Park is. When we get to Cape Coast, we'll go there. It's around the central region. So they were the lords of most of the Akan states, especially those in the forest zones. So at that time, there were no Asante people. And you should, if you be paying attention, I'm always saying Asante. I don't say Ashanti. I actually have to educate myself to stop saying Ashanti. Because it's Asante. Okay. There's the word Asante comes from two words. Asa inti. Yes. Asa means war. And inti means because. So because of war. Because of war. If you put the word, put two words, because of war is asa inti. So asante for that means um, because of war people. Four means people. So Asante Four, because of war people. So Asante Four, that's what they call. So this Dintra people were a kingdom. And they loaded all the people here, the ethnic groups and the other clans and all that. And the way the king was treating them wasn't very, very good. And so the people had to find a way to break away to get their freedom. And so, at that time, one of the kings or one of the states, of the Akan states here, had sent his son to go and study in that Dintra kingdom. So back then, um, kings would send their sons or their nephews to go and study. Because their nephew, when the king dies, the nephew who would succeed. So to get the nephew um, really prepared for ruling, he has to go and study at another king's place. So he went there, so this nephew was there and uh, studying at the Daintra Kingdom. And his name was called Osei Tutu. Osei Tutu. Whilst he was there, Osei Tutu forgot that he was just learning at an enemy's camp. But he fell in love with one of the daughters of the king. And so when the king got to know, he had to run away. And when he ran away, he went to another powerful ethnic group. In Ghana at that time, there were three main powerful ethnic groups. The Dintra, and I called the Akwemu, 
and the Achims. These were very three main powerful groups before the Asantes came in. So to run away, he couldn't go to his people because his people were under subjugation. So he had to go and run away to another powerful place. So he ran away to the Akwemu people. The Akwemu people can be found around the Akosombo area, where the Volta Lake is. So he ran away there, and there he was. So the people, one day, the Daintra king asked them that anytime they come to pay royalties, and the royalties, they, they came to pay in a form of gold. By that time, gold was in abundance. They traded in gold and they used gold. So they come in gold, they bring in food crops and food stuffs. And sometimes they come and paint the palace. There was a special paint that they used to paint the palace. There was a special clay that they painted. At this time, this king requested that when they are coming along, they should bring their wives. And because if a Daintra kingdom is requesting for any of you, your wives, it's a good thing because we are royals, because we are your masters. And this was an insult to them. And so they had to get away. So quickly, they had to sort the dice. And they remembered that they, they had somebody who was there and would be a good informant. So they quickly had to look for where Osei Tutu was. So they went and they went to Akwemu Kingdom to get Osei Tutu. And once Osei Tutu was there, he had a good friend who was a priest. Here, yeah, priests, we call them Okomfo. Okomfo, priests, traditional priests. And his name was called Anochi. So here, what we call, we call them Priest Anochi, Okomfo Anochi. So Konfanochi came with Osei Tutu and then they met at a place here. In Asante, there's a place, a town, one of the towns that wanted to come together. It's called Kwaman. Kwaman. And so they met and all the other chiefs came. And when they came, they were talking of how they would be able to defeat the Daintra kingdom and the king. And so what happened was they were confused, they were talking, everybody wanted to be the leader to go and do that. And then the priest stood and said, no, left to you alone, you can't decide, you can't choose, you all be confused. So this is what I'm suggesting, and we consult the gods. Each of you go back to your village and towns, fast for three days. And then on the third day when you're coming, we'll meet here again. And when we come, each of you should bring your stools, the stools that they sit on. A stool is a symbol of authority. Each of them should bring it. But when they bring it, they would consult the gods, and the gods would choose one stool that would represent and bring them all together. And on that, that stool would nominate the person who would lead. So they all went. It's fasted for three days, told their people about it. The people were happy, but in the same time they were sad because they felt that their chiefs would be losing their power. But then they agreed. So the third day they came and they assembled at a place which is called Bantama. Now a place called Bantama. And there they all met. And so the priest first collected all the stools and then took part of their hair and fingernails. The part of their hair and fingernails, he bent it into ashes. Uh, all the stools, he buried it. And then he made a covenant he made a covenant from their fingernails and their uh, their hair mixed with palm wine and he made them to drink and then after that he put a sword and stuck it and with all the stools and stuck it on the ground and to this day the sword is still there and he made a statement that today this sword nobody would be able to remove it if any of you who are here wants to remove it, that means you don't want what we want to have happen. So, with dancing, with music, he conjured the golden stool. If you've heard of the golden stool. He conjured the golden stool from the heavens. And he came and fell on the lap of Osei Tutu, his friend, Osei Tutu the first, so he became the first. And he fell on the lap. After that, he told them, each of you would have to swear allegiance. And then he would also swear allegiance to you that this two that has come is now the soul and the embodiment of all of you because you've agreed to do this 
And so if any of you would want to come and take out this tool, that means you want this unity. And so to this day, this place that we've met would one day become a place where if somebody wants to receive life, would get it. And if somebody comes here and doesn't have, can't, can't get life, that person would lose their life. And true to prophecy, that place has become a hospital. So a place where people go to receive life, they give birth. That's a place where the same place where people die. And true to prophecy, that is still there. So the sword is still on the ground. And today, nobody has been able to remove it. That's around the 1700 of it today. Nobody has been able to move it. And the hospitals. Yes, and the hospital is built around it. Oh, we're running now. Yes, running now. And the hospital is the second largest hospital in Ghana. Yes. It's called Okonfo Anoche Teaching Hospital. It's named after the priest. Okonfo Anoche Teaching Hospital. No, it's in Kumasi. Yes. Yes. Are there any traditional what? Spirituality? Yes. Yes. So they have been infiltrated by the missionary? No. No. So... Yes, they speak English in Kumasi. Yes. Is there a speed limit? <laughs> <laughs> see, no signs. No. Oh, we're driving up here. <laughs> so, there's TGI, there's Ghana. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, but there's there, there is speed limit. Some drivers sometimes drive reckless. Yeah. So, yes, continue. So, after they had come together and decided on one um, leader now, the people were ready to go and fight the, their enemy. But then the priest told them that the person who will lead the war, yes, they would defeat their enemy. But on the return back, on the seventh day, that person would lose his life as a sacrifice. And so one of the kings who were gathered said he wants to go because they didn't want to sacrifice their new king. So one of them from a town called Mampong, Mampo means prominent town. So the king of Mampo decided that he would go. And but then in exchange, they had to do something for him. So in exchange, they have a silver stool. So when the Asante king is not there, you have their Mampo king on a silver stool. And so they went and then defeated the Daintra kingdom. And on that day, because the people came together because of war, the word Asante came out. You understand? So it's because so they are the Asante people. And from that day onwards, no other people could subjugate the Asante the people who came together, the Asante people. And they became more and more powerful and then spread. Because they had the leadership of the priests and then they had a very good military skills from Osei to towards their founder. And so they kept on expanding. And so the word Asante, so that's how that's the, the whole story of the Asante people come. And from that on, they became known as the Asante people. And in some books, you will hear of the Asante Empire. Because after that day, they spread all the way to part of Togo, part of Cote d'Ivoire. The whole of the northern sector, you had to, you know, one of the things that the British had to fight to get this whole place um, colonized, they had to defeat the Asantes first because they couldn't go north because the Asantes were the ones in the north and they controlled the north. From this side to the north, they controlled it. So they had to defeat the Asantes. And around the 18, the, the last war that was fought was around 1897. Um, then before another war that was came, before another war that came when they took away their king and then there was a, there's a famous war uh, led by a woman warrior um, she was born on a Thursday. Is anybody born on a Thursday? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you know the famous grandmother? Yeah. Asante, Asante, Asante. Yeah, Asantewa. Yeah. So Asantewa means the only Asante. Asante is the account. There's Asante people. Wa is female. Yes. So Asantewa. So yeah, Asantewa. So yeah, Asantewa yeah, led that war uh, because the British had learned that indeed. The Asantes had the golden stool, which was their source of power. And so they wanted to take it away from the Asantes. 
the priest had told them that they need to guard this stool with, with their life. They need to protect it. Once the stool is taken away from them, their whole kingdom, their whole unit, their whole identity will be lost. So to date, the Asante stool is still there. It comes out every 10 years. And there's a big deba that is celebrated. Next year would be one of the year that the golden stool would come out. Wow. So a lot of things is going to happen next year. You know what what time of a uh, year? I mean, what time of the month? They're going to coincide with the the current king, um, the day of installment and his birthday. It's in, probably so. It probably will be between April and May. Okay. Yes, the current king is born in May, and the installment actually happened around May. So probably would be during that time. So basically, this is an overview of their centers. And while we go through the, the various days, we'll be hearing more of them. and will be talking more of them. All right? So the, the pronunciation of Shanti is your feet? Yes, the British. So even that spelling, that S-H, is European. It's European. So proper word is S-A-N-T-E. Yeah, N-T-E. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay.